you were to ask the non-Muslim, the Christian, close your eyes and imagine your God. Many of them, some people from Africa, African Americans, they will co close their eyes and have an image of a white man, a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes sitting on a big chair and he's dangling his feet like that. Islam didn't leave this to our imagination to figure out who Allah is, where Allah is. The great scholar of Islam, Al Imam Malik, tremendous scholar of Islam. Some man came to him from the Muslims and he wanted to argue and debate how is Allah over that throne? I want to know how. Allah didn't make it your business. He made it wajib upon everybody to be here for Salatul Juma. He made it wajib for someone to stand up here and give the khutbah. He made it wajib for the lady to wear hijab. He made it wajib for us to fast in Ramadan, those who have the ability. He didn't make it the sunnah, nor did he make it wajib on anyone to try to figure out and find out the details of how he is over his throne. That's not our job. That's not our business. The man came to Al Imam Malik and said, tell me, how is Allah over his throne? And Imam Malik mentioned to that man, the istiwa of Allah, him being above, him going over. That's well known to the Arabs. You ask any Arab who knows this language, he's going to say it means to go up into a sin. It is known what it means. How he did it is unknown. To believe it is wajib. And to ask about it and investigate it, that's an innovation. So Allah described in the Quran that he has a face. Allah described in the Quran that he has two hands when he addressed Iblis, Satan. And he told him, what prevented you from prostrating to what I have created with my two hands? The Prophet tells us that the Prophet has, that Allah Azza wa has fingers. When he says, oh Allah, the hearts are between two of your fingers. You flip them as you wish. Oh Allah, make my heart steadfast on your religion and so on. These attributes, one would say, Akhi, this is similar to humans. How can we say this to Allah? As I say, I seek Allah's forgiveness. So I would say to those who claim this, Akhi, this word is known, but the meaning is different. When I say that an elephant has a leg and I have a leg and an ant has a leg, are the legs di similar? Definitely not. And Allah Azza wa has the highest example. We do not Azza wa Jal simulate him to any of his creatures. But you believe that Allah is alive. So why don't you say that living is also part of human nature? Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala is alive. Allah Azza wa Jal is all hearing, all seeing. So Allah sees and Allah hears and I hear and I see. But there is no resemblance none whatsoever. How do the hand of Allah look like? Don't imagine. Just leave it. Do Allah have hand? As a believer, what do you say? Yes. Why do you say Allah has haram, shirk? How you compare Allah with human? No, I didn't say Allah's hand is like human hand. Allah said he have hand. What can I say? You must say Allah's hand represent his power, his authority. Power, Allah said qudra. Power, the word power means qudra. Or you can, is qawiyun. Kaharun, but the word yet you open any dictionary, Arabic dictionary, what is the meaning of yet? Literally, yet means hand. Just say it hand. I didn't say Allah said. The Prophet said, Who knows Allah better than Allah? Who knows Allah better than Prophet Muhammad? If the Prophet said, hand, we said, hand. How do the hand of Allah? Nothing is similar to Allah's attribute. Ummat al-Islam. This issue is a microcosm of a bigger, wider, greater issue. And the greater issue is we have to learn our aqidah. We have to learn our aqidah because, again, the importance of the aqidah is that Allah Azawajal is going to ask you, Who is your Lord? Who do you worship?
لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد